Good day, dear students. Uh, today we'll tell about very important and very interesting part of amino acid metabolism about the, uh, their conversion to a specialized product. Just see that um, all of the amino acids that can appear in our body, uh, they all can be acquired through the breakdown of our own intracellular proteins or uh, can be um, ingested dietary proteins. And these amino acids can enter three metabolic roots uh, within our body. Uh, first of all, they can be used for biosynthesis of uh, tissue proteins, uh, our own proteins, or can be created to amino acid derivatives. And we will tell about this pathway today. Or um, they can be catabolized into their functional group and carbon skeletal. And this process involves reactions of deamination and transdeamination or irreversible deamination reactions with the releasing of ammonium. And uh, this ammonium, after that, um, can uh, this ammonium enter the urea cycle and is converted into urea and excreted through the urea. Uh, each carbon skeleton of deaminated amino acid follow the uh, unique metabolic pathway and can be broken down into the different intermediates and uh, pyruvate and acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate and so on. And these compounds can be all completely oxidized uh, to carbon dioxide and water with energy production through the citric acid cycle. Uh, let's to see it better on the next our slide. You see that um, uh, all of the our 20 amino acids they can be or converted into acetyl coenzyme A uh, or can be converted into pyruvate, oxaloacetate, fumarate, succinyl coenzyme A, alpha ketoglutarate, you see, and uh, they can be or finally degraded to carbon dioxide in water with energy production or um, can be used for biosynthesis or glucose or ketone bodies. In the spite of this common fate, amino acids are classified as glucogenic and ketogenic according to the type of the intermediate metabolites. The ketogenic amino acid gives um, rise to acetoacetate or acetyl coenzyme A from which acetoacetate can be synthesized. The glucogenic amino acid which um, give rise to pyruvate or oxaloacetate, fumarate, succinyl coenzyme, alpha ketoglutarate, the you see intermediates of the uh, citric acid cycle, and all of them they can serve as a substrate for gluconeogenesis, with final result glucose synthesis. Uh, really, only two. Uh, amino acids, you see we mark them, these two amino acids, leucine and lysine, they are clear, purely ketogenic. Uh, this aromatic amino acid, together with isolase leucine, um, uh, they are both, you see, and tryptophan, phenylalanine, tyrosine, isoleucine, they are both glucogenic and ketogenic. It means that during their catabolism, their carbon skeleton can be cleaved into two parts. And one part is used for ketone body synthesis, another part for glucose synthesis. They, that's why they are mixed, glucoketogenic. All other amino acids, they are glucogenic. Let's again repeat them. You see two of our amino acids, leucine and lysine, they are ketogenic. Five, glucoketogenic. And 13 last amino acid, they are uh, glucogenic amino acids. Uh, but you see, you already know that all our amino acids can be used or for biosynthesis of our own protein de novo, 
or can use for uh, fat uh, metabolism or glucose synthesis. But together with this, these amino acids can be converted to different um, very important substances, amino acid derivatives. And today we will tell about this way. This is our topic for this lecture. See here that, uh, of course, all of these amino acids, or 20, um, we can use for protein synthesis. Uh, they can be or um, glucogenic, or ketogenic, or both. But see again on this picture how many different, very important substances it is possible to produce from these amino acids. And uh, purines and pyrimidines, that's why nucleic acid. And pigments, and uh, different biogenic aminas, between them many hormones and uh, neuromediators. And heme, and choline, and phospholipids, and creatine, and carnitine, and many, many other. And I will tell you about these, that's why these using or unusual, very important using of amino acids in our body. We start to discuss this um, convention of amino acids from uh, two sulfur-containing amino acids. We have only two of sulfur-containing amino acids, cysteine and methionine. Uh, these amino acids are metabolically uh, closely related. And uh, let's first of all tell about the metabolism of cysteine. First of all, you see, of course, cysteine, it's a uh, protein amino acid, but cysteines play a special role in the uh, proteins. If you remember this famous disulfate bond, which is so important for the correct formation and stabilization of three-dimensional structure, um, only cysteines took part in the formation of this strong covalent uh, disulfate bond. That's why cysteine plays a very important role in the normal uh, protein's folding. And two molecules of cysteines, you see this is cysteine and this, uh, they interact one with another, form this disulfate bond, and uh, the name is these two cysteine residues to form a cysteine molecules. Uh, Except of these many uh, uh, proteins and enzymes they have in their active site, cysteine and its uh, this uh, SH group involves in the catalysis and many reactions. Uh, cysteine participates in the synthesis of glutathione. It is a typical triapeptide uh, containing uh, gamma glutamic acid cysteine and glycine amino acid. So it consists from three amino acids. That's why um, I will show you the biosynthesis of glutathione and its function a little later when we will tell about glycine metabolism. Uh, cysteine also serves as a uh, precursor of the uh, tyroethamine fragment of uh, coenzyme A, mm, C, this is a structure of coenzyme A, uh, which consider you know, the base of this uh, coenzyme A, of course, pantotaminic acid, uh, vitamin B3. But pay attention on this part, you see this. It is a derivative of cysteine, a result of cysteine uh, decarboxylation, beta mercaptoethylamine. See, after decarboxylation of cysteine, we produce this group, and this cysteine's SH group, it's a place for acyl or acetyl uh, group attachment. Uh, cysteine um, uh, is a practically, uh, practically the only source of the urine sulfate, and um, another important way of the using of cysteine um, is a synthesis of taurine in animal tissue and in our organism the same. Uh, synthesis of taurine, I will show you, full synthesis of taurine, you see, because um, uh, 
by decarboxylation of cysteine, uh, derivatives or cysteic acid uh, or um, cysteine uh, sulfinate. So here, here, here may be two waves of taurine production. Uh, first reaction is oxidation and from cysteine we produce cysteine uh, sulfinate after decarboxylation of which uh, hy hypotaurine is produced and next oxidation of hypotaurine lead to taurine synthesis. Or maybe another way, we continue oxidize cysteine sulfinate and produce cysteic acid and now already decarboxylation of which lead to taurine synthesis. Uh, you have to know this way or this or these, but you, uh, we will ask you during uh, our classes the reactions of taurine synthesis. And it's uh, this molecule is important for us because uh, uh, taurine has many different functions. It is essential for the synthesis of the bile acids in the liver. Uh, in addition of this, it is very important in the cell as an antioxidant um, agent. Uh, it is used to reduce lipid peroxidation and um, it binds to hypochlorite uh, anion uh, with the formation of chloramine complex. Um, and uh, it is play a special role for the normal uh, brain development. You can read here all functions of taurine. If we tell about metabolism of methionine, uh, it's, uh, you see, rather complex. Uh, first of all, methionine, um, the same play, uh, plays a special role in the proteins. Um, why? Uh, what a special role? I think that you remember it. Methionine um, is caught uh, by a stat codon, A-U-G. Uh, thus, methionine is involved in the initiation of the translation processes. All our proteins, they are start from methionine synthesis. It is the first amino acid in them. After that, uh, they can be cleavage. Uh, and um, we already discussed that, um, I will not tell, but uh, now I won't tell you that uh, uh, methionine is essential amino acid, but uh, cysteine, it is um, relatively essential. Why? Because cysteine can be produced from two amino acids from serine, uh, which gives the carbon skeleton, and uh, the donor of uh, sulfate, um, this uh, sulfur atom for cysteine, is methionine. It's one of the functions of methionine. It's supported in biosynthesis of cysteine. Uh, methionine is glucogenic amino acids, and um, one more very important function of methionine, it is a donor, of this methyl group. Uh, this methyl group of methionine is a mobile one, you see, carbon fragment, and it is used for the synthesis of a number compounds. You see how many. Uh, because um, uh, we can take this methyl group from methionine and give them to these compounds. The name of this process is transmethylation reactions. This reaction has very important metabolic significance. Uh, but um, the methyl group uh, in clear, this uh, simple methionine molecule, is tightly bound to the sulfur atom. Uh, that's why um, the direct donor of this one carbon fragment is not methionine itself, but it's active form. And first of all, necessary to activate methionine, and the name of its active form is S-adenosine methionine, S-A-M, SAM. Uh, let's see the, uh, what happened during this activation, uh, reaction of methionine activation. See here. Uh, and uh, 
a little after that we will uh, tell after uh, discussion of this reaction we will tell about a few examples of this um, transmethylation reaction due to which an carnitine and epinephrine can be produced uh, you know that uh, we use methylation for biosynthesis of uh, nitrogen bases uh, we will tell about uh, data about this uh, pathway of uh, creatine synthesis. Uh, choline, it's uh, known for your molecule because uh, choline, choline we use and for choline uh, we use and for acetylcholine synthesis and phosphatidylcholine synthesis. Esodenosine um, uh, methionine took part in production of melatonin, uh, different glucosamine oblicans, and uh, it's the same took part in the different reactions of detoxification um, because took part in methylation reactions in the liver. Um, now, now let's tell about the reactions of methionine activation. Uh, the active form of methionine is, as I tell already, S adenosine methionine. And uh, the sulfonium form of the amino acid will be formed by the addition of methionine to ATP. Uh, during this reaction, it's an absolutely unique reaction because during this reaction from ATP we remove all three phosphate group. Uh, we don't know another example of this um, uh, variant. And now we will carry our transfer our methionine to adenosine only. You know that adenosine, this is a uh, uh, sum of adenine plus ribose. This is adenosine. And we produce, you see, adenosine methionine. And our adenosine is attached to the sulfur. That's why name of this is S adenosine methionine sample. Uh, this uh, already active form of methionine took part in transmethylation reaction. Now we are very easy later I will show you again can take this sulfur group and donate this sulfur group to any substrate. And produce, you see, this has happened, the methylation of substrate, but together with this, our methionine is converted to, um, after this reaction, into S adenosine homocysteine. Uh, but about this later. Now, see, see on uh, this um, active form of methionine. Um, reaction, uh, this reaction, formation of S adenosine methionine is uh, catalyzed by adenosyl transferase, um, this enzyme. And this enzyme, adenosyl transferase, uh, present in all type of our cell. Uh, in the S adenosine methionine, for us, interesting this uh, group, you see, is uh, sulfur now, is, uh, has a positive charge. Uh, and it's a trivalent um, sulfur, you see. And uh, due to this, this methyl group now is an unstable group and has a very high activity. Very easy now we can transfer this group from donor to different substrate acceptors. That's why name of this is, is an active methionine. Uh, now, uh, during the cleavage of this, uh, as, as I tell already, S adenosine methionine is transferred to S adenosine. Ah, I tell you that very easy to take this methyl group um, to uh, homocysteine. But first of all, I want to show you uh, the example, one of example of transmethylation reaction. During the lecture, we will tell about almost all of them because later we will tell and about epinephrine synthesis and about choline synthesis. But here you see um, the same very important for us pathway biosynthesis of creatine. Um, we will see this picture not one time uh, because three amino acids took part in 
creatine synthesis. You see, first amino acid is arginine, second glycine, and during this step, you see, as adenosine methionine took part in methylation. But let's tell about path this pathway step by step. First reaction occurs in the kidney. Pay attention that it's a not very long uh, way, but very interesting because uh, it takes place in different organs. Um, okay. Let's continue. So, first reaction, it's a um, transfer of um, uh, a part of uh, arginine uh, from uh, first amino acid arginine to glycine. Uh, during uh, and arginine glycine transamidinase uh, catalyze this reaction. This enzyme present in the kidneys. We take this um, amidine group of arginine, see here, and attach this amidine group to nitrogen of our glycine. Uh, the, uh, this part of arginine has name ornithine, and about the function of ornithine, um, you will listen next lecture. It is a part of the urea cycle, but in this pathway, the name of the product is guanidino acetate. Uh, guanidino acetate, after that, with the uh, bloodstream, uh, is transported to the liver. Mm. And um, in the liver already, um, uh, we used, uh, um, uh, we have the continue, the next reaction. Uh, first of all, happened the um, uh, phosphorylation of, um, uh, first of all, we form creatine. Uh, in the liver and um, during the creatine happened the methylation. Methylation. You see, we take one methyl group from our S adenosyl methionine and attach this methyl group to this nitrogen. And here pair CH3 group. And name of this uh, product is creatine. Uh, this um, enzyme, the, the enzyme which catalyzes this uh, reaction is uh, transmetylase. After that, creatine is transported in the bloodstream to the muscles or brain cells where um, uh, we have another uh, enzyme, uh, um, creatine kinase. And we will tell about this enzyme especially a little later. But under the action of this enzyme, um, uh, very important uh, molecule is produced, creatine phosphate. Uh, this uh, molecule, uh, creatine phosphate, is a form of high energy compounds. It's a rich of energy. Pay attention. You see? This is creatine phosphate. And uh, enzyme which catalyzes this reaction, creatine kinase, this enzyme is localized in the cytosol and in mitochondria of the cells. And this enzyme has organ specificity. And we, uh, you know this enzyme. Um, normally, activity of this enzyme in the blood is very known. And uh, you know that uh, found three isoenzymes forms of creatine kinase, MM, MB, and BB. MM form is characterized for um, muscles, um, skeletal muscles. MB form from, for the heart, and BB form for brain cells. Creatine phosphate plays the, an important role in providing energy to working muscles uh, during the initial uh, period. And uh, as a result of these non-enzymatic reactions, uh, dephosphorylation, um, mainly this reaction occurs in the muscles, of course, creatine phosphate is converted to creatinine. And uh, creatinine after that uh, is excreted in the urine. 
and the daily release of creatinine in each individual is a constant and uh, it's proportional to the total muscle mass. And uh, determination of the content of creatine and creatinine in the blood and urine is used to characterize the intensity of uh, muscle work. Especially it's important for the sport medicine and in some pathological condition. Determination of the activity of enzyme creatine kinase. Um, and uh, of course, it's first of all, it's isoenzymes form in the blood is used in medicine for diagnostic uh, diagnosis of different diseases such as uh, myocardial infunctions or uh, myopathies or muscular, uh, muscular dystrophies and other. Uh, pay attention that this way start in the kidney continuous in the liver and final reactions we can see or in the muscles mainly or in the brain. Brain the same can use creatine phosphate like additional source of energy. And I will show you this picture and when we tell about glycine and when we tell about the role of arginine in our body. body. Now, you see that um, there are very many reactions of methylations in our body and this reaction is imp important for us and they are very intense. Uh, this causes a large uh, consumption of methionine since uh, it is an essential amino acid uh, and you see that methionine uh, cannot be synthesized in our cell and we take methionine only from uh, food proteins and uh, in this case it is regard the possibility of methionine regeneration with the participation of any non-essential amino acids serine for example or glycine and uh, this regeneration is a uh, great important for us and um, as a result you know that as a result of the cleavage of methyl group as adenosyl methionine you see, uh, is, uh, eh, sorry, 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 as adenosyl methionine, you see, this is activation reaction, again, let's repeat again, activation of methionine um, and formation of its active form as adenosyl methionine, uh, and when it took part in uh, methylation reaction, you see, we uh, give this methyl group to substrate, um, S adenosyl methionine is converted to S adenosyl homocysteine. After that, this S adenosyl homocysteine uh, can be cleaved by hydrolase to adenosine, into adenosine and homocysteine. And now you see um, uh, possible the remethylation of homocysteine again into methionine. Uh, home, and uh, for this reaction, we used enzyme homocysteine methyl transferase. We add methyl group. Um, uh, this methyl group. Uh, this one carbon fragment we can take or from serine or from glycine. They are not essential. We can produce it easily and the amount in our body, body is enough for uh, reactivation of essential uh, methionine. And you see that um, uh, the um, uh, donor, it's, uh, we uh, first of all take this one carbon fragment from another amino acid, give this one carbon fragment from tetrahydrofolate, it is a derivative of vitamin B9, folic acid, active form of uh, folic acid, uh, and um, after that use this methyl group for resynthesis of methionine and pay attention that um, intermediate carrier of the methyl group in this reaction is a derivative of vitamin B12, methylcobalamin, which acts as a second coenzyme of 
this reaction. And uh, later, when we will tell about the vitamins, you, um, you, you will see that both of this vitamin and B9 and B12, they took part in the metabolism of one carbon fragment. And here you can see one of their using. Later, later, uh, I will every time ask you what amino acid took part in choline synthesis or epinephrine synthesis. And I hope that now you already can recognize it and to answer me that, of course, active methionine, SAM, S adenosine methionine. Next amino acid that we will discuss with you today, they are the simplest, your lovely amino acid, glycine and serine. Uh, these amino acids, they are they the same perform various and very important functions in the human body. They play important role, important role, important role in the synthesis of many uh, biological uh, importance compounds um, like uh, nucleotides, uh, coenzymes, heme, complex lipids, creatine and other. Uh, both of these amino acids, they are non-essential, they are glucogenic, uh, that's why both of them, they are used and for protein synthesis and for glucose. Well, let's start. And as usually we start from glycine. You see, glycine. Uh, glycine, I already tell, it is a non-essential amino acid. Glycine can took part in biosynthesis of other amino acids, serine and trianine, and the reaction of the synthesis of um, serine from glycine, um, it is reversible reaction. See here, uh, that's why they can interconvert it one to another. And if, for example, serine is converted to glycine, a serine in this case is a donor of one carbon fragment. If we want to uh, produce serine from glycine, necessary to add one carbon to glycine. So, and again, I want to show you that uh, this reaction is. Uh, reversible, that's why we tell about intern conversion of serine and glycine uh, one to another. Uh, glycine, is, um, uh, glycine plays a special role in some proteins, uh, for example, in collagen, concentration of glycine is very high. Its third amino acid in the collagen is glycine. Glycine is necessary for the heme synthesis. Uh, you already know I show you that glycine took part in the synthesis of creatine. It took part in the first reaction in creatine synthesis together with arginine. I will show you that today that uh, glycine is necessary for uh, purine synthesis. Mm, glycine took part in biosynthesis of bile acid. Uh, already today we'll tell and now I will show you reactions of glutathione synthesis uh, where three amino acids and on one uh, took part and one of them is glycine and we will tell about the function of them. Glycine we can use for conjugation with different xenobiotics and it's a way of the detoxification um, of them in our body. Uh, Different antibiotics uh, and drugs are the same. And uh, uh, glycine uh, itself is the most important octagaba, of course, inhibitory neurotransmitter in the spinal cord, diencephalon, and some part of the brain. And high level of glycine in the blood, plasma, and urine usually indicate impaired brain function. You see how many functions of this glycine. Well, let's see. I promise to show you glutathione synthesis, but first of all, I again want to repeat you the function of glycine in creatine phosphate synthesis. We discussed this way. I only repeat it uh, and show position of glycine in this pathway together with methionine. And now you see synthesis of glutathione. Uh, Glutathione is unusual, um, atypical uh, tripeptide. Why atypical? Because uh, it's a tripeptide. It consists of three amino acids, you see, glutamate, cysteine, and glycine. Only pay attention on the first uh, reaction, formation of the first 
bone in this tripeptide. You know that classical peptide bone is formed between alpha carboxylic group of first amino acid and alpha amino group of the second amino acid, but not in this case. Here we form bond between gamma carboxylic group of our glutamate and alpha carboxylic group of cysteine. And for, you see, this unusual dipeptide. Pay attention on this bond. It's not classical bond between this group and this. It's a bond that is formed between gamma carboxylic group and amino group. Next amino acid, our glycine, we attached traditionally without problem. Here already we will, uh, you can see reaction between alpha carboxylic group of cysteine and alpha amino group of our glycine and we form triapeptide with a special name glutathione. And uh, you see that uh, you can use this pathway for the explaining and cysteine metabolism, and glycine metabolism, and glut uh, glutamic acid metabolism. What is the function of glutathione in our body? Very many functions. Uh, first of all, it serves as an antioxidant. We have a glutathione and depend enzymes. Uh, it took part in conjugation with different xenobiotics, with conjugation with the drugs, uh, which lead to increases of their solubility, and such way uh, we can tell about detoxification of them. Uh, you know that uh, biochemically detoxification means increasing of solubility. Uh, glutathione is involved in amino acid transport across cell membrane. Uh, and uh, glutathione um, can serve as a cofactor for some enzymatic reaction. It is a cofactor of a group of enzymes. I promise to show you the role of glycine in purine synthesis. And really, you see, purine in purine synthesis took part uh, many amino acids. For example, this um, nitrogen we take from aspartate. These two nitrogen we take from, from glutamine. Uh, this carbon from carbon dioxide. These two carbons, it may be or from methionine, or from glycine, or from serine. They are one carbon fragment, oh sorry, which uh, carries, uh, it is incorporated to purine from tetrahydrofolate. And pay attention on this pink color group. This is a full glycine. You see that all atoms of glycine, they are incorporated into purine molecules. That's why glycine plays very important role in um, RNA and DNA synthesis. But uh, uh, as you, uh, as we discussed uh, already, always, uh, uh, almost always different metabolic uh, pathway um, uh, can have any disorders, problems with the enzymes, deficiency of enzymes, or abnormal activity of them. Uh, the same we can tell about uh, some hereditary disorders of glycine metabolism. Currently, several diseases um, which are associated with disorders of gly glycine metabolism, um, and um, they are based or on the lack of any enzyme or a defect in the transport system of this amino acid. But in all cases, we can see accumulation of glycine in the uh, body, and first of all, in the blood. The name of the situation is a hyperglycinemia. Uh, it is increased concentration of glycine in the blood. Usually we can see due to the defect of in glycine cleaving enzyme system. And um, the most severe manifestation of hyperglycinemia is a severe brain damage, convulsion, hypertension, and respiratory failure. 
and um, it's a pity, but it's, uh, it is often uh, fatal. Uh, a pair of glycine in the urine, glycinuria, is characterized by the increased excretion of glycine in the urine. You see, and one of symptoms of this disease is the formation of the uh, oxalate uh, kidney stone. See the picture. Um, excess oxalate is uh, um, of endogenous origin. It is obtained, you see, from glycine, uh, upon deamination of which, first of all, we form, you see, this is glyoxalate due to deamination with the removal of this. And after reduction of this glyooxalate uh, to oxalate. Mm, the mm, cause of this glycinuria is uh, obviously a violation of the glycine reabsorption in the kidney. In, in the um, future, it may be lead to bilateral formation of the oxalate stone in the urinary tract. And it can uh, progress and uh, finally lead to different nephrocalcinosis um, and um, urinary tract infection can develop. And the patient even can uh, die in childhood uh, because it's an inherited uh, problem. And uh, usually or from uh, renal failure or from hypertension. So it's... Um, Dangerous situation. Now, serine. Serine is also non essential glucogenic amino acid. You see? Glucogenic amino acid. Serine, the same, of course, used for protein synthesis. And um, serine, the same, plays important role in the proteins. We have a number of serine proteases, where serine is a part of the active uh, site of this enzyme, because serine has very active OH group, which took part in catalysis of different reactions. Uh, we already tell about interconverted uh, of serine uh, into glycine. Mm -hmm. Moreover, you see that serine can took part in formation of phosphatidylserine. Combination of serine with phosphatidic acid gives us these important phospholipids, which play a special role in the formation of our membrane. Um, uh, during our classes, we wrote already reaction of serine decarboxylation, which lead to formation of ethanolamide, and you see how many very important substances we can produce from ethanolamide choline and from choline corresponding sphingomyelin, phosphatidylcholine, acetylcholine. Ethanolamide, the same lead to formation of phosphatidylethanolamide. And uh, we will write now with you some of these reactions. Uh, serine is, all, uh, I already tell, is non-essential amino acid. Um, serine can be synthesized in uh, intermediate product of glycolysis, 3-phosphoglycerate, and um, the amino group after that to this 3-phosphoglycerate we take from glutamic acid. Uh, what else interesting you have to know about serine? Um, serine does not uh, take part in transamination. It has a special uh, um, uh, way of deamination uh, by dehydration, uh, di directly deamination. Um, and uh, as we tell already, uh, one of the functions of serine, it can be a donor of one carbon fragment. This is group, CH2OH group, is readily transferred to tetrahydrofolate. Uh, and tetrahydrofolate, I already tell you, is a coenzyme of um, uh, one carbon group transferases. And due to this, uh, as this donor, serine can take part in many, many different reactions. And due to this, when it becomes a donor of this group, serine is converted to glycine. And we already tell the glycine itself can be a donor of one carbon group. And all of these reactions, they are reversible. Uh, let's see any of these reactions. 
For example, you see that uh, synthesis of acetylcholine. Serine. After decarboxylation of serine, with serine decarboxylase uh, and uh, vitamin B6, pyridoxal phosphate took part in decarboxylation, we produce ethanolamine. Now, see that methylation of this group, this nitrogen and ethanolamine, lead to production of choline. Let's count how many methyl groups here. One, two, three. All of this methyl group we take from, yes, of course, from methionine, s adenosine methionine. But one methionine gives only one methyl group. That's why for choline synthesis, we use three methionine, active methionine molecules, three s adenosine methionine. All of them, they are converted to three homocysteines. Now, choline. We can use all phosphatidylcholine synthesis, but now on the slide we tell about acetylcholine synthesis. You see that after that choline binds with, I hope that you recognize this molecule, I don't write, but now all of you have to know what is it. This is acetylcholine A. And condensation of two of this molecule lead to production of acetylcholine. You know that acetylcholine is synthesized in the nervous system, nervous tissue, and it serves as one of the, the most important excitatory neurotransmitters of the autonomic nervous system. Combination of O itself, serine, lead to formation of phosphatidylserine, or if we combine here derivatives of serine ethanolamine or choline, it leads to production of corresponding phosphatidylcholine or phosphatidylethanolamine. You see, this is a way of their synthesis. Next amino acid that we will discuss today with you, histidine and tryptophan. Maybe their structure is rather complex, but their metabolism is rather simple. Uh, but their role in our body continues to be very important. Uh, the amino acid histidine is exposed to different enzymes in different tissue, and uh, it is involved in um, Two different metabolic pathways. Uh, one pathway it is simply catabolism of histidine to the end product and uh, with energy production or glucose synthesis. And second is a um, synthesis of histamine. It is a simply decarboxylation of our histidine. Due to decarboxylation of histidine um, in the mast cell of connective tissue, histamine is produced. Histamine performs the many different functions in the human body. It stimulates the secretion of the gastric juices, saliva, it increases capillary permeability for the sedema, lowers blood pressure but only in bloodstream, but it increases intracranial pressure, causes headache. Uh, histidine reduces the smooth muscles in the lung, causes uh, suffocation. It participates in the formation of inflammatory reaction, causes vasodilatation, skin redness, tissue swelling. Uh, causes is uh, allergic reactions, uh, act as a, a neurotransmitter, and you know that um, histamine is a mediator of the pain. And very widely we use in the medicine antihistamic uh, substances. Um, they are drugs which are blocking the action of histamine, uh, excess of histamine action. Now, 
this reaction is the simplest and usually you have no problem with them. With them, of course, if you know the structure of histidine. It's simply decarboxylation and I want to repeat it again. Coenzyme of this aromatic decarboxylase is vitamin B6. Pyridoxal phosphate, the name of the active vitamin B6. Tryptophan. Tryptophan is essential amino acid. Tryptophan is both glucogenic and ketogenic. Uh, and uh, it is a precursor for the synthesis of um, important compound like serotonin, melatonin and um, coenzymes of niacin, NAD and NADP. The metabolism of tryptophan is divided into two pathways, kynurenine pathway and serotonin pathway. Here you can see serotonin pathway of tryptophan metabolism. Uh, serotonin, which is produced during this pathway, is a neuromediator. And uh, serotonin is formed in the adrenal gland and in the central nervous system. And normally about 1% of um, tryptophan uh, is used uh, for serotonin synthesis, converted to serotonin. Uh, during the first reaction happened the hydroxylation of tryptophan to its 5 position, you see. And we produce, here I um, write uh, two reactions in one step by explaining you step by step. That first of all happened the hydroxylation of tryptophan and we produce 5 hydroxy tryptophan by uh, hydro, uh, hydroxylase enzyme and then this 5-hydroxytryptophan is converted to serotonin as a result of the action of aromatic amino acid decarboxylase uh, and we produce serotonin. So here are two reactions, hydroxylation and after the decarboxylation and we produce, you see, this is serotonin. Serotonin is a biologically active substance um, with a um, broad uh, spectrum of action, many different actions. It stimulates the contraction of the smooth muscles, has a vasoconstrictor effect, uh, regulates blood pressure, body temperature, respiration, um, it has antidepressant effect. And um, according to some reports, modern reports, um, it uh, can act as a uh, neurotransmitter the same. Uh, and it can part uh, in allergic reaction um, because um, it is synthesized in small quantity in the mast cell. Uh, serotonin after that can be converted into hormone melatonin. You see, uh, which regulates daily and season changes in the body metabolism and it is involved in the regulation of uh, some reproductive functions. For example, uh, melatonin uh, inhibits effect, uh, no, it has inhibitory effect on ovarian function. And melatonin also performs a, a neurotransmitter fun function the same. If we tell about second um, pathway of uh, tryptophan metabolism, kynurenine pathway, uh, this pathway mostly occurs in the liver and leading to oxidation of tryptophan and synthesis of NAD or NADP. Here I show you NAD, but you know that if we attach phosphate group to this position, we produce NADP+. Plus. Uh, we can produce, provide nearly all our nicotinamide requirement from tryptophan. Of course, if uh, we have enough amount of tryptophan in the diet. Uh, normally, about two-thirds of our tryptophan is used for production of this nicotinamide. Uh, derivatives. Hereditary disorder of uh, this uh, pathway of tryptophan metabolism is named uh, Hertnup's disease. And this disease is characterized by a low plus level of uh, tryptophan and other uh, neutral amino acids and uh, they are elevated urinary excretion. 
symptoms, the pilagra like symptoms uh, are common because first of all is depend from the impairment in the synthesis of NAD plus. Uh, and serotonin from the tryptophan. And um, if you tell about symptoms, these clinical symptoms include uh, dermatitis, diarrhea, uh, ataxia, mental retardation. It's the main symptoms. And um, it can be even the reason of the death. Because uh, this uh, reduced equivalence plays very important uh, play very important role in our body. Now let's tell about the group of branched amino acid: valine, leucine, and isoleucine. You see, they are they have branched radical. That's why they are branched chain amino acids. Uh, all of them, they are essential, and um, these three amino acids undergo a common pathway, but they have different final product. Uh, I want to show you the uh, uh, pathway of them uh, on the example of leucine. Uh, first reaction that happened with leucine is a transamination, and... Um, this is reversible or trans reaction, and due to these reactions, um, these uh, amino acids they are converted to uh, corresponding keto acid. Uh, if we tell about um, next way, you see, uh, if yeah, you produce this is keto acid, you see, during the transamination amino group is changing to keto group and we produce corresponding keto acid. And next reaction that occurs with this brain chain amino acid is decarboxylation. We remove carbon dioxide, oxidative decarboxylation, and produce uh, branched acyl coenzyme A. If we tell about um, Leucine. Leucine is converted to isovaleric coenzyme A. Uh, all other, you see, um, uh, other uh, two brain chain amino acids, they have the same pathway. And that's why you see this scheme, it means a complex for you, but I only repeat this scheme. You see, transamination and oxidative decarboxylation. Here the same, you see, happened. Transamination with them, and we change amino group to keto group, you see. Type of reaction is the same, only different amino acid and different keto acid. And after that happened, the uh, oxidative decarboxylation of them, we remove carbon, you see, carboxylic group, like carbon dioxide, and, um, and the type of this reaction is absolutely the same like we convert pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. Or um, in the Krebs cycle we the same can see formation of alpha ketoglutarate from isotrate. This is a type of reaction. And here the same, we have a complex um, uh, enzyme which consists from uh, multi-enzymes complex. It consists from three enzymes and five coenzymes. Uh, and type of reaction is absolutely the same. Only we produce different acyl-CoA uh, derivatives. Such way, valine is converted, as we tell uh, already, uh, you can see here, valine is converted to, you see, to uh, propionyl coenzyme A, it is a precursor of glucose. If we tell about um, uh, leucine, uh, leucine is converted to uh, uh, valeric acid and um, after that uh, leucine can be converted to acetyl coenzyme A and acetoacetate. 
and uh, they are substrate, they are ketone bodies, and they are acetyl coenzyme, they are substrate for fatty acid synthesis. If we tell about isoleucine, isoleucine is degraded to propionyl coenzyme A and acetyl coenzyme A, uh, such as valine is a clear glucogenic amino acid, uh, leucine is a only ketogenic amino acid, but isoleucine will give two uh, products, uh, acetyl coenzyme A and propionyl coenzyme A. They, uh, it is a both, isoleucine is both glucogenic and ketogenic amino acid. Uh, but you see that I especially, you see, mark that um, deficiency, abnormal activity of this enzyme, problem with this reaction, oxidative decarboxylation of derivatives of our this, uh, uh, amino acid, lead to a special disease, maple syrup urine disease. And really, the urine uh, is um, of the affected individuals um, smells like a maple syrup, a uh, burnt sugar, from here the name. But this disease is also known as a branch chain ketonuria or leucinosis. So different names maybe uh, you can read in uh, your book. Uh, maple syrup urine disease, um, you see, I again want to repeat it, it is due to the this defect of this enzyme, enzyme of the brain chain alpha ketoacid dehydrogenase. And uh, this causes a blockage in the convention of valine, isoleucine, and leucine to corresponding um, final product. And uh, as a result, it lead to um, accumulation in the plasma and appearing of urine, high amount of brain chain amino acids, and their keto acids, you see, corresponding keto acid. And accumulation of this brain chain amino acid and keto acid, causing it lead to um, many problems. Uh, to impairment in transport and functions of other amino acid, to block of protein biosynthesis. Um, this brain chain amino acid uh, competitively inhibits glutamate dehydrogenase. That's why it leads to disorder of uh, uh, deamination of uh, all our amino acids. Um, and uh, now, finally, it leads to acidosis, uh, lethargy, convulsion, mental retardation, coma, and finally death within the one year after birth because this is inherited disease. And of course, uh, we want to treat these babies. Is it possible? Yes, but only if we tell about the earliest diagnostics and you see that this is earlier diagnosis by enzyme analysis within the first week of life is very important in this case and um, for this this is the estimation of the urinary brain chain amino acid and keto acid um, of course will help us to put correct diagnosis and if we put this diagnosis uh, we can treat Treatment is the simplest. Um, it's a uh, diet with low uh, concentration of this branched amino acid, with low concentration, not absent, because as we tell already, these amino acids, they are essential. That's why we must take them from the food for biosynthesis of our own uh, proteins for the normal development of the organism, but uh, not more than necessary for protein synthesis, necessary to prevent accumulation of this amino acid in the body. And of course, the, the plasma level of branch chain amino acid should be constantly monitored for adjusting of the dietary intake. Okay. I saw many tell about this. Now you can read about this maple syrup disease 
or leucinosis. Deficiency of this enzyme brain chain um, oxidative dehydrogenase enzyme. And here you can see all about what I tell you. That you see that if uh, the diagnosis uh, we put very late, and if we no uh, don't uh, treat them, it lead to uh, irreversible mental retardation and early death. And treatment is a simple, it is a special diet with a low concentration of this enzyme. That's why it's so important if you as a doctor know about this disease, understand what happened with the babies, to put the diagnosis during the first weeks after the born, and only after that you can treat and these babies will develop absolutely normally. Here everything depends from your knowledge. Next amino acid that we will discuss with you, this is a decarboxylic amino acid. Why decarboxylic? Because they have two carboxylic groups. We have only two uh, decarboxylic amino acids, aspartate and glutamate, aspartic acid and glutamic acid. Glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is the populist amino acids in our body. Its concentration is very, very high, especially in the brain, because this amino acid performs various different various functions. First of all, it plays a very important role in the energy production, since glutamine serves as a um, supplier of alpha ketoglutarate, a component of citric acid cycle. You know that during the uh, deamination or transamination, uh, glutamate is converted to alpha ketoglutarate. Uh, we already discussed today that it's a, a part of glutathione I mean, uh, tripeptide. We start biosynthesis of glutathione from condensation of our um, uh, glutamic acid with cysteine. And if you remember, we form abnormal uh, bonds between them. This carboxylic group took part in the formation of this bond. Uh, glutamate is a um, Glucogenic amino acid, glucose is produced. Um, uh, glutamate plays a very important role in some of our proteins. Uh, for example, later we will tell about a special role of it in the activation of blood clotting factors um, under the action of vitamin K. We will attach one more carboxylic group to glutamate, and this gamma carboxyglutamate uh, uh, lead to activation of the formation of this gamma carboxyglutamate in the blood clotting factors lead to activation of them. Uh, next lecture you will see about a special role of glutamate in detoxification of ammonium. Uh, glutamate is a source of glutamine, which in, in turn has a special functions in our body, body and decarboxylation of uh, oh, sorry, decarboxylation of um, glutamate lead to production of GABA. See how many important functions. And let's see this reaction. Gamma amino butyric acid synthesis. GABA synthesis. You see, name of enzyme we took part of this reaction. Catalysis reaction is glutamate decarboxylase, and it's usually vitamin B6 is a coenzyme of this enzyme. Uh, and um, we produce GABA from glutamate. Well, this reaction, you see, the simplest reaction, usually you have no problem to write this reaction. And um, Gluta, you know that GABA um, is um, play a very important role. Uh, first of all, this reaction, uh, decarboxylation of glutamate occurs in the nerve system, and um, GABA, which we produce as a main inhibitory mediator in the highest part of the brain. Um, the content of GABA in the brain 
in 10 times higher than other neurotransmitter. Uh, I think that you know mechanism of its function. It increases the permeability of postsynaptic membrane for potassium ions, uh, which causes inhibition of the nerve impulse and increases the respiratory activity of the nerve system, uh, nerve tissue. Uh, GABA improves blood flow to the brain, so it plays very important role for the normal functions of our brain and deficiency of this enzyme lead to deficiency of gamma amino butyric acid and many problems in our body. Uh, next, um, decarboxylic amino acid is aspartate, aspartic acid. No, as usually, it's, we, it's used for protein synthesis. It's a glucogenic amino acid. It is a precursor of RG, um, asparagine molecules is the same took part in detoxification of ammonia, ammonia and it plays two roles in this uh, function. First of all, it can took part in um, unharmful transport of ammonium from the nerve tissue to the liver and uh, you will see that this is a part of the urea cycle. Aspartic acid, aspartate, took part in biosynthesis of purines and pyrimidines, uh, and I will show you it. it uh, its function in purines, I show you before it, when we tell about glycine functions, and on the next time slide, we will see that uh, aspartic acid took part in um, pyrimidine synthesis the same. It is a donor of the nitrogen in the urea cycle, uh, I already explained you it, and of course you remember that it is a member of malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, which is so important for transportation of NADH2 from the cytosol to the mitochondria matrix. Here you see biosynthesis of pyrimidine rings and if you see well attention, the most part of this ring is going to be taken from aspartate. So aspartate is necessary and for uh, purines and for pyrimidine synthesis. That's why it's a absolutely uh, play a very important role, absolutely important role in biosynthesis of DNA and RNA. Um, we tell till this time to uh, about decarboxylic uh, amino acid. Now you can see amino acid with two amino group. See here, one, second, one, second. And again, we have only two uh, D-amino uh, amino acids, mm. lysine and arginine. Let's tell about a special metabolism and a special function of them in our body. See, arginine, it's a glucogenic amino acid. Of course, we use it in for protein synthesis. Arginine, you already know, yes, initiate production of creatine. It is a member of the urea cycle. And you see nitric oxide, the same, it can be produced from arginine. Nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. Now, I again repeat it, you see. Three times we see this picture because three amino acids took part in these processes. And now we tell about arginine, which is a donor of this amidine group in these processes. Next lecture, uh, you will listen information about the urea cycle and uh, arginine. See here, you will tell about each of these reactions, especially now I want to show you that arginine, it is a member of this, the same very famous cycle in our body, it's the same Krebs cycle, moreover it is the first Krebs cycle, he described it first, and arginine is the part of this cycle. And we already... Uh, 
So that arginine serves as a source of nitric oxide in our body. And nitric oxide, the same is important, you see, source. And nitric oxide is an important signaling molecule that activate uh, formation of the cyclic AMP in our body. And uh, of course, it's very important for the um, uh, cyclic AMP is the second messenger. And it took part in the um, action, formation of the action of uh, different uh, peptide hormones. Um, it the same regulate the uh, heart uh, contractions, regulate the tone of the blood vessels. Um, in addition, the um, nitric oxide radical is involved in the regulation of the rate of apoptosis, prevent the platelet aggregation in thrombosis such way, regulate the secretion of mediating hormones, and it's very important, it has anti-cancerogenic activity. If we tell about the function of uh, lysine in our body, lysine the same, mm, a member of proteins, and later I will show you that it uh, plays um, very special and important function in uh, some of our protein. It's a ketogenic clear, if you remember there are two clear ketogenic leucine and lysine, amino acid, and it is a precursor of carnitine, and I hope that you remember that carnitine uh, took part in transportation of fatty acid across mitochondrial membrane. What is the special role of lysine in our proteins? Um, first of all, in the proteins we can see not clear glycine, but um, many derivatives of uh, e this um, amino acid. Uh, for example, in collagen, there are very many hydroxylysine molecules. Uh, sometimes we can see methyl lysine or um, acetyl lysine in the proteins. Uh, and um, lysine can took part in the uh, formation of uh, some uh, lysine itself or its derivatives can took part in formation of additional cross-linked in the collagen, and it's a special role of the of lysine in the collagen. Detail we will tell about it later when we will study biochemistry of connective tissue. But already now, I want I can to show you that formation of these additional bonds, additional cross links, lead to increase of. Um, uh, and it's very important, it's even essential for the uh, tensile strength of the collagen. If we tell about another protein of connective tissue, elastin, lysine, and here uh, plays a very important role because lysine took part in the formation of desmosine. It's a special structure. You see, this is a desmosine. Um, desmosine is composed of four lysine residues and uh, allowing for uh, bonding to the multiple peptide chain. Uh, the four lysine groups, four, you see, lysine groups, uh, combine uh, to form like pyrimidium nucleus. And um, this machine is found uniquely in elastin, and these elastic properties of uh, elastin mm, it's a pair on you due to this machine. This machine gives this elasticity, and um, you know that elastin it's a part of um, many our connective tissue and in the skin and lungs and uh, uh, very important for the elastic uh, arteries. That's why this uh, the desmosine structure is rather important for the normal functions of these organs. Um, lysine, uh, the same is uh, involved in the formation of insoluble fibrin. 
uh, you see that the, this is fibrin 1, fibrin 2, uh, and the strands of this fibrin polymer um, are different with uh, other amide covalent bonds between the lysine radius, uh, uh, residues of um, one fibrin polymer molecule and the glutamine. Uh, residues of other and uh, due to um, condensation of to this molecule we pro you see, see additional cross uh, link between these fiber uh, strands and it lead to formation of the strong three-dimensional network uh, which includes and in platelets and erythrocytes and leukocytes um, that's why you see that lies in the same play a very important role in the blood coagulation. And now, finally, we will tell about the metabolism of uh, phenylalanine and tyrosine. Uh, phenylalanine is uh, essential amino acid because uh, its benzene ring cannot be synthesized in our body. Uh, tyrosine is uh, um, conditionally non-essential amino acid because uh, a part of tyrosine can be produced from uh, phenylalanine. Uh, the content of these amino acids in the food proteins and in animals food and in plant, uh, plant proteins including plant proteins are, is a quite high. If we tell about uh, phenylalanine, uh, phenylalanine is um, consumed in two ways. It includes, uh, includes in our protein, so phenylalanine is essential. We can take it only from the uh, uh, food proteins and it is can use only or for biosynthesis of our own proteins or for uh, production of tyrosine. And that's all. Phenylalanine has only these two functions. But tyrosine we can take and from our food and from uh, phenylalanine. Tyrosine has many different functions in our body. Its metabolism is more complex than phenylalanine. Of course, tyrosine we can use for bio, not can, but always we use for biosynthesis of our own protein. But together with this, tyrosine is involved in the synthesis of variety biological important compounds like catecholamines, such as epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, uh, thyroid hormones, T3, T4, and pigment melanin. In the liver, during the course of degradation, uh, tyrosine and through tyrosine phenylalanine the same, they are converted to metabolites um, which can serve as a precursor of glucose because during catabolism um, we can cleave them into part, the carbon skeleton. One part we can use for glucose synthesis, another part is it converted to acetoacetate, ketone bodies. That's why both of them, uh, they are mixed in glucoketogenic amino acids. Uh, and uh, or they can be catabolized, catabolized to a uh, final product, carbon dioxide and water with energy production. You see, this pathway is rather long and there are several hereditary, um, hereditary diseases associated with the defect in the enzymes of phenylalanine and tyrosine metabolism in different tissue. And we will tell about some of these diseases. Uh, first of all, let's tell about the um, first reaction, uh, formation of tyrosine. In the conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine, the reaction involves the incorporation of one atom of oxygen into um, para position of phenylalanine and the 
um, uh, second atom of oxygen is converted to the water. An enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is phenylalanine hydroxylase. Please remember the name of this enzyme. After that, tyrosine already, you see, can be converted to different, different substances. We already tell about them, thyroid hormones, catecholamines, or uh, full catabolism of uh, it to or, uh, or carbon dioxide and water, or we can produce glucose or ketone bodies from them. Now let's tell about the role of this uh, tyrosine for the, in the synthesis of different in these important sub substances, and we start from the biosynthesis of thyroid hormones. In the thyroid gland, uh, these thyroid hormones are produced: tyroxine or tetrayotyronine and triotyronine T3 and T4. Uh, they are synthesized from tyrosine residues in the lone protein, tyroglobulin. This protein is a rich of tyrosine residues. Uh, first of all, uh, happened the iodinization of this tyrosine in these tyroglobulins. And a special enzyme, thyroid peroxidase, catalyzes this iodinization. Iodinization can occur in different uh, manner. We can attach only one iodine molecule or two iodines, um, uh, uh, iodines atom or two iodines atoms, like on this picture. After that happened, the condensation of two tyro uh, uh, iodinization tyrosine, and here you see the same can be combination. If we combine two um, uh, Tyrosines with two iodines here and here, we produce tyroxine molecule. If here, for example, um, if here attach only one iodine, but here two, uh, and we combine them, in this case we produce triotyronine molecule. After that happened, the releasing of these hormones from tyroglobulins. And all of these reactions occurs under the action of thyroid peroxidase enzyme. Now, biosynthesis of catecholamines. By convention of tyrosine um, into catecholamines occurs in the adrenal gland and nervous tissue. Uh, in the... Um, these organs, tyrosine, um, you see, has not very long, but very interesting and important path pathway. Uh, why name is called catecholamines? Because um, the name catechol refers to the dehydroxylated phenyl ring. And uh, they have uh, amine, you see, deri uh, derivatives. Uh, that's why full name is catechol amines. Uh, synthesis of catechol amines involves in the, you see, these four reactions. And we produce all of these substances, they are important. And dopa, dioxyphenylalanine, and dopamine, and norepinephrine, and epinephrine. Now let's tell about each of these steps especially. First of all, tyrosine is hydroxylated to 3,4-dehydroxyphenylalanine, deoxyphenylalanine, deoxy, because we have two oxy group, two hydroxy group. That's why DOPA. This is phenylalanine with two oxy group. The name of enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is tyrosine hydroxylase. Second step, during the second step, um, this dopa is converted to dopamine due to its decarboxylation. And name of enzyme is dopa decarboxylase. Like in all other amino acid decarboxylases, 
Coenzyme of this enzyme is pyridoxal phosphate, vitamin B6. See here. In the nerve uh, system, dopamine um, plays a special role. It's a neurotransmitter and it, maybe it's already the final step of reaction. And uh, pay attention on this enzyme because deficiency of this enzyme can cause Parkinson's disease. This reaction is irreversible. Next reaction. Yeah, pay attention on this enzyme. Remember it, please. Deficiency of this enzyme lead to Parkinson's disease. Next reaction, uh, which happened with dopamine, is hydroxylation. And we have one more thought already OH group near this carbon. And the name of enzyme is dopamine beta hydroxylase. For this reaction is necessary vitamin C. See how many vitamins necessary. Yeah? And of course oxygen. And we produce norepinephrine or noradrenaline. In this reaction the same is irreversible. And at last, uh, the last reaction in, the, in this pathway is methylation of this nitrogen. See? A pair compare methyl group and we produce already epinephrine. The differences between epinephrine and norepinephrine is only this methyl group. And what is the donor of methyl group? Of course, our methionine, active methionine. So one more amino acid took part in epinephrine synthesis, and the name of this amino acid is methionine. Methionine SAM is a donor of this methyl group. That's all. You see that this reaction they are absolutely not um, harmful and you already know the mechanism of each of these reactions. Uh, of course catecholamines play many, many important they play many many important functions in our body. They regulate our metabolism and carbohydrates and lipid metabolism and we tell about uh, these functions of them many times. They stimulate the degradation of triacylglycerol and glycogen first of all. Now, but together with this they increase the blood pressure. Uh, dopamine and norepinephrine serves as a neurotransmitter in the brain and autonomous nerve system. And as uh, we already tell that deficiency of dopamine, um, uh, probably with dopamine synthesis, uh, can cause to Parkinson's disease. Um, Parkinson's disease is one of the most common neurological diseases. Frequency is very high. One to um, two hundreds among the people over 16. Uh, and um, the disease is accompanied by three main symptoms. Ataxia, uh, stiffness of movement, rigidity, muscles tangent, uh, tremor uh, involving um, involuntary movement, uh, musculite face, and uh, lethargy. Uh, treatment. treatment is a problem because dopamine does not cross the blood-brain uh, barriers and that's why it uh, can't be used for, as a drug. Uh, we can use DOPA and really we have levodopa, for example, uh, medicine and it's useful in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. And really in the brain, DOPA very fast is, catabolic, the, um, is uh, transformed into dopamine due to decarboxylation <coughs> and it uh, lead to <coughs> sorry elevated elevates symptoms of this disorder but unfortunately unfortunately we have a negative effect because dopamine synthesis occurs not only in the nerve tissue but in another other tissue the same and it lead to many negative effects it's um, such as a uh, nausea, vomiting, hypertension, and other. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, now, uh, one more product can be produced from um, tyrosine in our body. In the pigment cells, 
melanocytes, uh, tyrosine acts as a precursor of dark pigment melanin. And we know that melanin, it is, uh, it is uh, responsible for the color of our skin, hair, uh, eyes, retina. Uh, biosynthesis of melanin is rather complex. Only pay attention that during the first reaction, again we produce DOPA. Uh, like in epinephrine synthesis, only, only we use another enzyme. If in um, epinephrine synthesis we use enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase, in melanin synthesis, name of enzyme is tyrosinase. Uh, not need to study for this uh, uh, long and complex uh, multi-stage uh, branched processes, only uh, remember the name of this first enzyme in this long pathway, tyrosinase. And if we tell about the deficiency of this enzyme, it leads to deficiency of melanin synthesis. And name of this um, uh, pathology processes is albinism. Um, albinism, you know, what is a clinical manifestation? Even name already explain everything because from Latin albus means white. And really this is the absence of pigmentation of skin and hair and eyes and uh, patients often have a reduced visual um, acuity, um, photophobia of course appears and uh, for them uh, the sunshine is very dangerous. The prolonged exposure of this patient to the open sun uh, leads to skin cancer. Um, the incident of the disease is uh, approximately 1 to uh, 20 thousands. Uh, no, you can see these uh, two boys with albinism. Um, but, and so here only problem with the pigmentation and of course um, try to avoid the uh, action of the sunlight. Um, absolutely uh, okay with uh, their mentality and they have no any other uh, pathological uh, problems um, in their life. Only this problem with pigmentation. But if we tell about deficiency of this first enzyme in uh, phenylalanin metabolism, phenylalanin hydroxylase, I ask you to um, uh, pay attention on this enzyme. Here, in this case, a pair disease with many um, big problems already. The name of this disease is phenylketonuria, famous PKO. It's the same as inferior disease and um, Phenylketonuria is uh, um, very dangerous uh, for uh, without treatment. It can lead to um, uh, full mental retardation. You see that uh, we already tell that um, phenylalanine has only two waves in our body: or protein synthesis or uh, tyrosine synthesis and deficiency of this enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase lead to what? Deficiency of tyrosine and as a result lead to problem with production of all these substances from tyrosine and accumulation of phenylalanine in our body. Concentration of phenylalanine becomes high. Phenylalanine is hydrophobic. That's why our body try to look for any um, another way of increasing of its solubility for the excretion from the body. And uh, we use transamination reaction due to it we change this methyl group on keto group and produce phenyl pyruvate. Uh, really, in the liver, even a healthy people, very small amount of phenylalanine, less than 10%, can be converted to phenyl uh, pyruvate. Only concentration of them is very low. But during this pathology condition, this way becomes 
main way of the metabolism of phenylalanine. And it leads to increasing of phenylpyruvate, sometimes in 2000th time. In, uh, in the blood to bear so many uh, rather um, dangerous substances because after that phenylpyruvate can be converted um, or uh, into phenyllactate due to the um, reduction reactions or due to oxidative decarboxylation into phenylacetate. Uh, and... Um, uh, increasing of concentration of all of them in the blood and a pair of them in the urine. Uh, it's a uh, symptoms of this disease and even they give the name of this uh, disease, phenyl ketone urea. And the most severe manif manifestations of the phenyl ketone urea um, are impaired mental and physical development, uh, convulsion syndrome, uh, pigmentation of course disorder because we, uh, with a low tyrosine happened the problem with melanin synthesis and if untreated patient do not live up to 30 years and the um, incidence of the disease is rather high it's one to ten thousands of the newborn. Um, the disease, I'm going to detail, it's inherited uh, and uh, it's uh, inherited in autosomal recessive manner. Uh, severe of PKO manifestation is, is, is associated, first of all, with the toxic effect on the brain cells, a high concentration of phenylalanine, phenylpyruvate, and phenyllactate. High concentration of phenylalanine limits the transport of tyrosine and tryptophan across the blood-brain barrier and inhibits the synthesis of main neurotransmitters, dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, uh, progressive impairment of this mental retardation and physical development in the children with PKU uh, can be prevented by the diet with the dosage of phenylalanine. Only if this treatment is started immediately after uh, baby is born. And brain damage uh, can be prevented in this case. Only in this case uh, is important the um, earliest diagnosis of uh, phenylketonuria. Uh, to diagnose of phenylketonuria, we can use different methods and uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, methods of determinant of pathological metabolites and in urine and in the blood. Um, and um, the populace now is um, using of the Guthrie test. Uh, the Guthrie test uh, is a, a semi-quantitative uh, test. Um, and what happened uh, in the, how we do this test? You see that a drop of blood uh, is obtained usually by um, pricking the heel of a newborn infant in the uh, hospital, of course, um, and uh, we, but we do it not immediately after birth, um, burn, but uh, on the second or third day of the life, necessary to give some time for the accumulation of phenylalanine uh, in the in this body. Uh, the blood after that is collected on a piece, you see, um, or filter paper, uh, and. Um, no, after that, mail to uh, any laboratory. This small disk, you see, of um, uh, sample with the um, uh, filter paper, after that, um, punched uh, out and placed on a um, agar gel phenyl uh, plate, agar gel plate, you see, with uh, bacillus uh, subtilis. And um, these bacterials, uh, uh, for these bacterials, phenylalanine, the same, is essential amino acid. Uh, they have to take them from environment. That's why around the disc uh, with um, extra phenylalanine, the bacterials grow more intensively 
you see, and this is a positive result. So uh, babies, uh, these babies uh, with the, this blood uh, has a phenyl ketonuria, very high concentration of phenylalanine in the blood. Uh, this test is uh, high specific. Uh, possible to use another test, uh, possible to uh, determine the pineal pyruvate in the urine with the using of ferric chloride test uh, and green color is obtained. We will, we will do this test during our classes. You will see this um, test by uh, this test is not specific and since many other compounds gives uh, false uh, uh, positive tests. Um, after that, uh, if we understand that uh, this baby has this problem, uh, necessary immediately start to treat this baby with a special diet, with a lack of uh, phenylalanine. It's absolutely synthetic food. You see that all babies with phenylalanine, without treatment, they have mental retardation, uh, albinism, and one of symptoms, it's a special uh, mouth smell of urine. Uh, high concentration of this uh, phenylketone bodies in the urine give this special smell. And uh, uh, you see, necessary immediately start to treat this baby. Uh, with, uh, and we can do it uh, with this special diet with a uh, low concentration of um, phenylalanine. If we start to treatment immediately, uh, brain damage can be uh, prevented. And um, now it is believed that dietary restriction can be eased after 10 years of age. Uh, the brain uh, myelination uh, is end. But um, nowadays, many pediatricians are um, learning that to, uh, towards the lifelong diet. And I think it is uh, correctly uh, better to prevent accumulation of phenylalanine in the body. And... Um, Uh, you see, pay attention that concentration of phenylalanine must be reduced, but not absolutely eliminated, because these essential amino acids have to be used for uh, protein synthesis, first of all. And, of course, this uh, food must be rich of tyrosine. Tyrosine must be enough for biosynthesis uh, of all necessary um, uh, substances, hormones and melanin and so on. In this case, this baby can, be, can develop absolutely normally. Uh, the defective gene responsible for phenylketonuria can be detected in uh, phenotypically normal heterocyte carriers using the phenylalanine tolerance test. For this, the subject is given uh, on an empty stomach about um, 10 grams of phenylalanine in the form of a solution. And then every time um, uh, blood samples are taken and we check uh, concentration of tyrosine in these samples. And um, tyrosine content, um, normally concentration of tyrosine in the blood after uh, phenylalanine loading is significantly higher uh, than in uh, heterozygotes um, uh, carriers uh, of the, this phenylketonuria uh, gene. Uh, because uh, uh, these uh, heterozygote carriers cannot normally um, produce tyrosine from phenylalanine. And this test is used in genetic uh, counseling to uh, determine the risk of uh, having a sick child. If we tell about uh, catabolic pathway of uh, phenylalanine and tyrosine, you see that phenylalanine is converted to tyrosine. Uh, after um, transamination of tyrosine, we produce uh, hydroxyphenyl pyruvate. Uh, after some reaction, this um, hydroxyphenyl pyruvate can be converted to homohentizic acid, homohentizate, uh, which in, uh, in turn is converted to uh, 
to oxidation to pomaleyl acetoacetate. Under the action of, pay attention on this enzyme, homohentisate dioxygenase or homohentisate oxidase. You see this enzyme. Um, pay attention on this enzyme because deficiency lead to one more problem and we will tell about this problem a few uh, seconds later. Now, isomerization of malleal uh, acetoacetate lead to production of fumaryl acetoacetate. Pay attention with different colors. Uh, I show you uh, the position of each group in um, each of these molecules. And now when we break down um, this molecule we in two half compounds, we from this part we produce fumarate from this part, acetoacetate. Fumarate can be precursor of glucose. Acetoacetate is ketone bodies. That's why they are gluconketogenic. Now, here may be, of course, deficiency of different enzyme, but we will tell about deficiency of homohentisate dioxygenase. Deficiency of this enzyme lead to alkaptonuria. If we can see block here, it lead to what? Accumulation of homogentisate in the body. And under the action of air oxygen, this homogentisate can be converted to black alkapton, with, uh, which can be excreted with the urine and gives to urine black color, dark urine. You see, from here, Alkapton urea in the urine a pair alkaptons. Is it dangerous? Well, not so high like uh, phenylketonuria. Um, this disease is characterized um, by no, ex except formation of the uh, dark pigment urine. Uh, well, we can see um, accumulation of the pigments in the um, some part of the body, you see, it's a cosmetologic effect, but uh, the same it leads to pigmentation, you see, of connective tissue, you see, name of this is ochronosis, and can lead to arthritis. Um, the um, frequency of this disease is not very high, only about five causes per one million of the newborns. Um, this disease is inherited and in the uh, autosomal recessive manner and um, treatment is uh, hmm, usually no treatment of this disease. Maybe diet with uh, Low uh, proteins, especially phenylalanine and tyrosine, and that's all. And that's all you see here. Usually only arthritis and all these cosmetology effects, and that's all. This is alkaptonuria. Uh, we discuss with you all materials for today. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye, dear students.